when I was a kid, I fell off of this house under construction and, and I fell 12 feet and it seemed to take a long time. And I got really interested in this issue of does time run in slow motion when you're in fear for your life? I mean, I got interested in that question once I became a neuroscientist and had grown up. And so I did this experiment, I think you know about this, where I dropped people from a 150-foot tall tower in free fall, falling backwards, and they're caught in a net below, and I measured the speed of their perception as they're falling. Because everybody either has this experience or knows somebody with this experience where they get in a car accident, things seem to run in slow motion, and they can report all these details of what happened. Anyway, long story short, it turns out that the whole thing is a trick of memory. People don't actually perceive faster during a scary event. It's just that they lay down more memory. So when they read this back out, they say, what just happened? What just happened? It seems like they've got much more memory than they would in normal circumstances. So they say, you know, I watched the hood crumple and the rear view mirror fall off and the expression on the other guy's face and the blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anyway, that got me thinking about this issue about how we lay down memory. And it turns out that, you know, we touched on memory a while ago, but most things in your life you do not remember. Mm -hmm. You know, the number of cracks in the sidewalk and who was wearing what and what was on the menu on the wall. That, like, we just don't remember almost everything because the job of memory is to write down stuff that matters, that's emotionally salient or informationally relevant. You're just writing down this tiny fraction. But anyway, when you're estimating how long it's been since some event, the way you estimate that is by drawing on the footage that you have. Saying, oh, well, see, this happened, this happened, this happened. Okay, so that must have been two months since I saw my friend, or it must have been two years since I saw this other person, that kind of thing. So anyway, this was a, a whole bunch of research in my lab over the course of a decade that came together. But the point is, if you're laying down richer memories, you won't necessarily live longer, but you will make it seem as though you've lived longer because when you're asking what just happened or how long has it been, you've got more data, more footage to draw on. And, and of course, we all know this feeling when you go on some super exciting trip on the weekend and you come back and you're back on a Monday, you think, oh my gosh, it's been forever since it was Friday. There's so many things that happened. But if you just have a normal weekend, you think, oh my gosh, it's Monday. It was just Friday. There's nothing to write down. And so you don't feel that, that there was much duration that happened there. So this is why I think one of the most important things in life is about seeking novelty and always putting yourself in new situations such that you're laying down dense memories. The analogy, last thing I'll say on this is when you get to the end of a childhood summer, it seems that the summer lasted forever and it's because everything is new. So you're writing stuff down in your memory. But when you're older, you've seen it all before and, and you get to the end of a summer and you think, wow, I can't believe it's over already. I don't really remember it at all. It seems as though the summer didn't last long. Is it fair to then take from that the key criterion for rich memory as novelty, doing new things. Exactly. And, you know, by the way, this is one of the tiny silver linings to the pandemic, which otherwise sucked. But the one interesting part from the point of view of brain plasticity was that it knocked all of us off our hamster wheels and we were finding that the world wasn't what we expected. It was just unbelievable. Like if we had talked in 2019 and said, hey, could this ever happen? We'd say that's a great sci-fi story, but there's no way that it would be that weird. But it was actually that weird. And we all locked ourselves in our houses for 10,000 years. And so this is the kind of thing, you know, when you go to the store and there's no toilet paper there on the shelves, it takes your internal model and it totally says, whoa, I didn't even know that could happen. You start thinking about supply chains. You start thinking about how the world works. You're thinking about, wait, is, is the barber shop going to be open? Can I get a haircut during pandemic? Is this coffee shop going to be open? I mean, it just forced us to think about the world completely new. And I think if 2019 had continued and it had just been the same old world, we'd actually be less smart in a sense because our, our internal models just would have never gotten challenged in that way. Mm. Here's my idiothesis, which is an idiotic hypothesis. I think that I come up with these a lot, but I think that we might actually see a, a tiny decline in dementia some decades from now, just because we had this opportunity in the middle of our lives to actually kind of restructure everything and have to rethink everything going on. 